Dave Hunt, and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How's it going, Dave? We're a little, little chaotic today as we I had to do a new setup, and you're dealing with your new setup. Uh, mine's yeah. more temporary, and though. I'm, and I'm sick. Yeah, and so. you're sick. Yeah. But, uh, we're um, here. We're here. We're doing it live still. Yeah. I have right now, I I'm got my laptop on my dresser, uh, so the camera quality is not great. The angle is not flattering. Uh, and I have my lamp, which is on the floor with the lampshade off. And then I have a makeup mirror on just to get any sort of lighting in my bedroom. Cause it's like 93 degrees out in Chicago. And when we do these early recordings, I'm usually in the kitchen on my laptop, but that's right next to the AC. And I could not turn off that AC today. Like at all. <laughs> could not yeah, risk This it. is my fault. So there's enough stuff going on with work and other things and as well as uh it's, it's softball season and i'm not looking forward to playing a game in 90 degree temperature but you know much like this uh much like ddg when i commit to something i try to do everything in my power to to meet those commitments and and uh, i still want to play ball even though i'm sick um so we'll see how this goes uh thankfully i don't think i'm playing the outfield today so i won't have to run um but uh if i sound a li- little bit more raspy or or uh, scratchy than normal i apologize uh, if you get a cough that, get, that that gets in there on the live stream or on the audio, uh, I'm sorry. We'll try to edit it out as best as we can. But it's important to Michael and myself to to produce regular, consistent weekly content. Um, so with all that said, um, all the links are in the show notes. I'm not going to be long-winded with that today at all because uh, I don't have the strength to do it. Uh, leave us a review. That would be appreciated. Thank you. And we're going to throw it over to some news. And this is going to be 99% the Michael show, and I'll chime in here and there. Yeah, yeah. There was this, we're this close to me just doing a solo show <laughs> at a certain point, but we're here. So uh, let's cover. Luckily, because he threes next week, there's not a ton of stuff to call to talk about. Uh, the first story Dave is going to be very interested in. Uh, I think we're going to have <laughs> different different opinions on on all of this stuff. But here we go. Uh, Herman Host did a Q and A with the PlayStation blog, so not through Wired, which has become their go to, but they, it was a PlayStation blog. It was pretty in-depth but it wasn't like crazy long i believe it was just like a transcript of an audio interview for the playstation blog podcast if i'm not mistaken but in this q a uh, a couple little things came out of it uh ben studio is working on a new ip which we you know found out through jason schreier like a month ago but this is confirming they're working on a new ip they tweeted as much uh, as soon as this was posted that they are going right. to to do that Good to hear, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean like Ben's going away and they're working on a new IP, so they're not working on a remaster. Uh, yeah, or an auxiliary studio. Yeah, they're doing their own thing. Uh, they probably still are helping out other studios because that's just how PlayStation has worked with a lot of their studios. So good to hear that. Uh, Asobi, the Astrobot team, is officially a PlayStation studio. I guess they were like an unofficial team, like not a full actual team because they were just like an arm of the Japan studio. But mm-hmm. they are a full studio, and it sounds like they are starting to hire up to have, like, a proper Tokyo headquarters. I feel like this was kind of announced when they said Studio Japan was closing. Uh, they they said they would they move hinted people at it at least? Yeah. to Team yeah. Asobi, but it never meant that, like, Team Asobi was going to be, like, its own thing. But I guess... Okay. I guess this is the first formal announcement. Everything has been informal of just, like, hey, this is right. a studio, but it, we're not going to, like put them on a graphic that says PlayStation Studios until this point. Now they're going to be on that graphic with talking about like, here are all of our studios. So, right. The, um, other thing that came from this is God of War has been delayed to 2022 along with Gran Turismo, which me and Dave have probably been (laughs) one of many people that have been like, yeah, this is not coming out this year. So that's not, (laughs) It's not a crazy story that that it's been delayed. Uh, the studio confirmed it like, hey, we wanted to take time uh, t- to put this together and give like the best experience possible. Uh, the thing that I know Dave is going to be <laughs> bothered by is obviously we know Horizon's coming to PS4. That was known. But God of War is coming to PS4 and so is Gran Turismo 7. They are all going to be PS4, PS5 games. And in Horizon... They are trying to have it ready for this year, but they won't make a commitment to it. But God of War would be next year and Gran Turismo would be next year. Though, based on Gran Turismo's track record, that probably will slip into 2023, depending on 
how big of a game they're trying. Though it's been a while since Gran Turismo Sport, uh, which never yeah. felt like a full Gran Turismo game. So they probably are closer to being done than anything. Uh, or not done, closer to release than what we're used to from a Gran Turismo Studio uh, game. But PS4 for God of War and Gran Turismo 7. Dave, I'm sh- you had hot takes on, on Twitter, <laughs> uh, but go for it. Um, so the we've known about Horizon the whole time. Yeah. Like, um, essentially, since it was in that blog post. My biggest problem, like the root of my problem that I have with this, is that I genuinely feel like Sony is hiding things from the consumers. Um, like, is is it... Does it make business pers- sense and perspective to release these games on PS4? Yeah, absolutely. We just you read that data last week that said like ninety percent of Sony's um, money is come, um, you know, their game sales are coming from PlayStation Four. Yeah. So this one hundred percent makes sense from a business perspective, and and I understand this. Um, what I don't like is the like I mentioned before the the hiding. Um, I don't think that they're lying to people. I just think that they're hiding stuff, and we're not finding it out about it until later. Um, now I feel like almost everything that was shown almost like I, I, just a rough number. If like they showed 10 different things at the, the future of gaming event last June, I feel like 80% of those are coming to PS4 as well. So I don't really consider that to be the future of gaming. They were games um, that came out and, into the future though. So it yes, got, it got I, you I, on a technical like it's, term. It's, it's, and then if you really go back and I started doing some reading, if you really go back and read like what Jim Ryan said about believing in generations, if you really read what he wrote, or what he what he quoted was quoted. Um, he was talking about, you know, giving experiences that couldn't be given on other consoles. And PlayStation Five is doing that with the Dual Sense and the three D audio and things like that. Um, but I, I just feel I feel like they again hit it from the consumer of like at this point in time we were always talking about prior to launch. Why do I need an Xbox? Like I can do stuff on a PC. I can do all this stuff on an Xbox One. Like what do I need an Xbox for? And we all thought, all of us thought. Um, a PlayStation 5, you play it for the new stuff that's coming that's only going to be on PlayStation 5. Um, and it just doesn't feel like... And it was it, it's swirling around today again with um, Ratchet & Clank reviews hitting today. And it sounds like it's reviewing really, really well. Um, but now we're... We don't have another date for a PS5-only PlayStation Studio game. Yeah, not, we not, don't. For, not for a while. And we, we, don't have a, we don't have another game coming out that's PS5-only. Um it's and I don't I I just I I don't like it and 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 again it's my opinion and and I feel like I want and I and it's the same thing I want Xbox to do like and and I've said it prior to even getting my hands on both the consoles is like I want reasons to play with my new hardware and I don't want to I do I think that God of War is going to be a bad game because it's on PS4 no do I think that there is some mechanic that they want to put into the game that they won't be able to because it's on PS5 absolutely because it's on PS4 and PS5, like there's something that Sony Santa Monica wants to do that they can't do. There's something that Gorilla wants to do that they can't do. Um, and, and just, and, and, and now there's something polygamy. And, and, and if you don't believe me or you don't think that I'm right, like that's fine. That's your prerogative. Polygamy had to take something out of Gran Polyphony. Turismo. Polyphony. Yeah, sorry. Polygamy had to take something out right. of Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. <laughs> we, it's been reported all week that it was supposed to be a PS5 only game so now if they're if they've been told that you need to make this available on ps4 as well they had to remove something from the game well i so i kind of disagree just a little bit when it comes to like gran turismo and horizon because of the way those games are structures i doubt there would be anything crazy that would need to be removed especially for like gran turismo you would it, you don't think gran turismo was relying on the ssd at all for, no, for dynamic weather or loading or uh, number of cars well, or, I mean, or it, how it, the like the draw distance the SSD can't make, you know, it, it can handle, help make loading better, but it's not going to be doing stuff that's going to be like, oh, we're, we're going to lose amount of cars or the amount of detail in the cars because of the SSD. Uh, that's, that's raw horsepower stuff. I think Gran Turismo of these three games is probably the only one that probably could get away with being cross-gen without losing many features because it's just like make the cars pretty. Very linear things. Why didn't they do it in the first place then? What do you mean? Why didn't they, you know, why has it been, you know, if, if it was one of the ones that was easy enough to cross gen, why didn't, why wasn't it cross gen? And now it is, now it, it it's being reported that it was PS5 only. And now that they've been told to develop for the PS4 as well. I think that's bad messaging, but I'm saying like of the games that 
are on this list. The games that suffers the least from being crossed in is going to be Gran Turismo because it is a racing game. They're racetracks. You're just really, you just dial back stuff for this type of game. I think that's why, like, God of War would probably suffer the most because there are instances mm-hmm. of God of War on PS4 where you see they had to cut corners on the PS4. I don't think you're, you know, in terms of like how the game is structured, you know, those weird little like loading between worlds where you're just like walking through a path in a circle. That's something that needed to happen. Uh, The very specific ways that Kratos would have to like go through walls or doors so they can load new areas. That's something that could have been fixed on PS5. That can't be. Gran Turismo, you're you're driving in a circle. The only thing that's really going to be affected are how pretty the game can be, or at least in my opinion. They're not going to do anything crazy with Gran Turismo. It's just going to be like, look at how detailed yeah, I, I this don't, stuff I is. I don't really know enough racing, enough about racing games to like dig into that, but I feel like any time that you're adding a different version of hardware into your development, like it's impacting it. It, it, it impacts it. It could benefit, but in reality, they they could just downscale. We've heard it from I, many developers. I don't developers. think it benefits it at all. Like I, I just don't feel like it benefits it at all to to have to to have to develop for the prior gen. I mean, especially when development started on PS5 hardware only. I re- initially, well, we don't even know if it initially started that way. Well, we, we, I, the, when, the way it was presented was an, uh, at first was it was going to be a PS5 only experience. But it's we, it, it, the way PlayStation has been running. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the plan day one. They were just hoping to right. pimp out and sell as many PS5s as they could. And then they hit us with that news based on how everything's going. I can mm-hmm. see, especially that's the part that I feel like that they're hiding. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and I again, can totally see I don't, that. I, on I don't think that Sony is lying to us. I don't think that Microsoft is lying to its consumers. I don't think that anybody's lying to anybody. I think one company is going, Hey, you know what? We, this isn't going to work. Like, you know, like we, we don't believe in, in, in generation gating people. And that's Xbox. Whether you know, like, and and Xbox hasn't released a game, yeah. <laughs> so like, like that that that's their own problem as well. Sony has released three, um, <laughs> Demon Demon Souls, Returnal, and Ratchet will be out this week. And Miles, but Miles ran on PS4. But it's a significant difference, though. You can at least see <laughs> right. what. And it's gonna be. It looks like there's gonna be a significant difference on for Horizon. Like the the developer came out and. Um, talked about some of that stuff and th- th- those are those are reasons to have a ps5 but are they enough to make somebody that's maybe already on the fence try to get a ps5 and right now i don't R- ratchet it sounds like ratchet might be the case but i'm sorry like to the average consumer one game isn't enough right now because now we're talking about when do you think god of war is going to come out god of war is going to be probably late 2022 early 2023 okay so now we're talking that's what I think. 24 to 24 to 28 months after your new system came out, you're releasing something on your old system? Like, that's crazy. They specifically in the blog post were like, there's 110 million PS4s out. Like, God of War 2 came out a year or two into the release of the PS3 and on the PS2. Like, it's not unheard of that the last gen gets a game deep in... Yeah, like, one? Hmm? Not four. But it's just, I I really think that these games will come out probably before 2023. So we're talking about like two years into it. I think the pandemic did fuck a lot of things up to where they're just trying to squeeze whatever money they can out of the stuff. I don't think this is going to greatly affect the quality or the potential for Gran Turismo 7. And honestly, when it comes to like Horizon, I don't think it's going to really affect Horizon because I don't think they were going to do anything crazy from one game no, to the I, other I, I i agree with what you're saying like and, and and that's the part that i want to make sure that i'm not conveying is confusion um is horizon has been developed on ps4 horizon 2 has been developed on ps4 and is now being upscaled to ps5 and it appears that god of war is the same thing hey we're gonna hit these benchmarks on ps4 and that means that we can do these benchmarks on ps5 cool great I it, reading into it myself, and again, I don't know enough about it. Is that um, Polyphemy was told PS5 allegedly was told PS5, and now they're being told, "Hey, you got to make it work on PS4," which means that they have to essentially, in theory, kind of downscale their game, right? Yeah, they a little they can downscale yeah. from from what we've been told from developers. Downscaling is way easier than uh, you know doing two different versions of the game. So it's totally possible. The only thing that sucks, though, is like the PS4 is chugged running like 
God of War 2018. Horizon. Be, Horizon. Yeah. So those uh, on the Pro, you were you were talking about. It sounds like your Pro was gonna hover. Yeah, but it ran <laughs> the games better. Let's say like PS. Like I'm just talking about just yeah, the yeah, yeah, base yeah. PS4. Those are gonna struggle yep. significantly running these games, and it's gonna be up to Sony to not run into like a cyberpunk scenario where uh-huh. they need to keep a certain quality. Will that hurt a game like God of War? Definitely, because God of War. I think what we're seeing, like specifically, like especially with how the reviews went from like Ratchet and everything, is Ratchet is the first game from PlayStation Studios, if you don't count Returnal, uh, that is really showing off the power of the hardware. And I think linear games you can do with a lot more with in terms of showing mm-hmm. off the new hardware. And I was really looking forward to seeing what God of War can do on new hardware. But now it's since it's going to have to be cross gen they can't get as fancy as they wanted to yeah. while something like Gran Turismo is a racing game. There's only so much they can do other than make it pretty horizon open world game. Yeah. That already has like a pretty set standard and didn't really show any like, well, they've already come out and said there's certain things that, um, the PS4 player is only going to get in cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've like in terms of like a uh, graphic, gra- graph fidelity or what did it, well, um, it was like the, the lighting, the fancy lighting yeah. is only in cutscenes on the PS4, and it's in everything on PS5. Yeah. Uh, so there's Horizons in a spot where it's just like, with what they were creating, it's just going to be like visual downgrades for the PS4. God of War could have done some crazy things that I think we're seeing in like Ratchet and Clank. Uh, yeah, I, I, that they I think can't that do anymore. I, I, and again, it's just pure speculation on my part. But <coughs> sorry. Um, I feel like Atreus, if they had aspirations or goals, I'm assuming Atreus is in this game as well. Um, I think they said they were continuous to tell the Kratos and Atreus journey. Um, there could be, you know, as as annoying as it's been of like when you played the last of us and you played as Joel and then Ellie's AI, and then you played, you know, Atreus's AI as well. Like there were certain things that were like, okay, that's a little irritating. Those are still going to be there because it can't be on PS5. Yeah, only. And, and that hopefully they could have been gone if it was only on PS5. And I, that's why I keep saying, like, of the three games that are going to be cross gen, I think God of War suffers the most. I think Gran Turismo will be fine because it's just going to be visual upgrades and details. And right. Horizon, I think, is coming out soon enough that it kind of doesn't matter. God of War is the one that's perplexing. <laughs> I think I think Horizon's either coming out this holiday or it's coming out like February. Like it'll be their, right. their spring game, but like God of War, it will either next year, or next summer we'll get like, Hey, we canceled the PS4 version or Hey, it's coming out at the end of the year. And it's going to be like, it's still going to be a good game. It's still going to have a great story, uh, but it's going to be very similar to what we got on the PS4 God of War because it's coming to the PS4. Uh, yeah. So th- we won't get like reading the reviews for Ratchet, seeing videos of Ratchet, Ratchet gets to do some cool ass shit because they're on PS5 hardware and yep. didn't have to worry about anything else. And it's a linear game, so you can do a lot more cool shit when you're. But I'm just I, I get through. that the de- obviously the development or what Ratchet is doing can only be done on PS5. But why wasn't Insomniac given the pressure to make it on PS4 as well? I think because like, they why why is they they pushed Insomniac to to release Spider Man cross gen and that could have been a compromise between studios of just like, okay, well we want to do crazy shit for Spider-Man, but we won't so we can get it on PS4, but let us do uh, like ratchet. I think insomniac has hit the naughty dog level for Sony where they get to call their own shots. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm not saying Santa Monica doesn't have that, but Santa Monica might not have had, they don't have it. They don't have it yet. Or Mm -hmm. specifically Santa Monica, wasn't doing anything crazy that they could make a case why it needed to be on PS5 only. Like, I'm sure the Sony studios are like, what do you want to do? Okay, is this something that you absolutely need to do? Or can we put it on last gen and sell way more copies? Right. And and they have to examine everything that way uh, as, as long as they can, especially until they get to the point where people can just walk into a store and buy a PS5. I think yeah. that's the also messaging is, it. yeah. The messaging is just confusing as well. Like, I didn't realize this, and this is my fault, and it's ignorance on my part. But if you buy Immortals on PS5, like you buy a physical disc of Immortals: Phoenix Rising, or um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 
um, and you put it in a PS4, it doesn't work. But you put a PS4 disc in a PS5, and it works. Yeah, but I, even though they're I, they're the same game. No, I know, but there's not a PS there's not a PS5 version of Immortals. But that's been the case for years. You've never been able to put a new disc into your old system. Uh, I know, but you but you didn't you never saw. You never saw the same game on a PS in a PS2 box and in a PS3 box. I mean, or a PS3 box and that, a PS4 box. But that's box. like saying, you know, like, oh, I put my uh, Madden Xbox One in my Madden 360 and it didn't work. Why not? Like, but it didn't. But that when they're next to each other, that's what I'm saying is that like there's they're not different. Like, what's on the disc that's different? It has the uh, nothing. It nothing. It has the patches <laughs> built into it. <laughs> like. That's I, I get it. But I mean, and again, it's Xbox. And, and and I know. Yeah, I get it. Like every time I talk about Xbox, like, yeah, they got their ass kicked last generation. I understand that. I don't live under a rock. But, you know, you you put in there's very, very few Xbox series only disc. I think it's 2K and maybe Madden um, that but they're they're essentially two skews. And at this point in time, like I, I hate to say it, but release two different versions of God of War. Release a seventy dollars version and a sixty dollars version, and tell me why one costs ten dollars more than the other. It's gonna be, hey, this has better, better lighting. This is uh, better fidelity. And, and I'm I'm okay with that. And but that's what the case is gonna be. It's gonna be two different SKUs, and they're gonna have the. Differences. It's not gonna be though. You're gonna when you buy it digitally, you're gonna buy the PS4 or PS5 version. No, you're gonna. I guarantee, for God of War, you're gonna be buying a PS5 version if you want it. Maybe you'll be able to buy like a digital deluxe edition that will let you buy both, but it'll, it's they're going to be two different SKUs. Uh, so you think if you go to the store at holiday 2022 and God of War is out, there's a PS4 box and a PS5 box? Yes. Yeah. Why? Okay. Why? Yeah, there definitely will be. Especially by then, there'll be PS5s to buy, so there'll definitely be. And then retail work employees or retail companies are going to have to do the thing they do every gen where once one starts to sell a little bit more the shelf for the previous gen just gets smaller and smaller uh right. to where there will be no advertisement i just, I just feel like you're conf- yeah you're just confusing your customers well and, and, I hate and, it. That's, and maybe it's that's, maybe it's my background in retail like I, I just hate it but based on how like it's worked for electronic retailers you know video game retailers you just make the last gen shelf smaller and smaller until it just disappears and then it's just the bargain bin so that's probably how it's going to go. It we're probably going to end up in a situation like with the the Wii uh, was it the the Wii U and the Switch Zelda where it was really hard to find the Wii U Zelda because they didn't make as yep. many. They made sure they had Switch copies in store and you had to order the the Wii U version like online uh, to get it. So it's probably going to be that scenario where they just don't carry the last gen game. Mm-hmm. If PS5 can get their or Sony can get the stocks of PS5s at a comfortable level where they can feel comfortable doing that. Uh, but I think that's a, a reasonable scenario to, to, to come across by the time God of War comes out, like based on all the estimates we've heard uh, for the, uh, right. the, the drought ending, hopefully in 2022. Do you think we're going to go through all of 2022 without a PS five first party experience? Um, no, I'm sure one of the, uh, one of the other studios will have something. I'm sure Naughty Dog will release some sort of news about their next thing. Um, I would have to look at all their studios again. Uh, I have a feeling we'll probably get a lot of information on various studios, but I think we'll probably get Gran Turismo next year for sure. I, th- I have a feeling we might actually get Gran Turismo before God of War. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about a PS5 only game. Um, let me look at their studios. I would have to look at it thing because the only problem is they released too many things towards the end of last gen, uh, which is a shame. But yeah, uh, I can see Spider Man. I mean, that's the, the... <laughs> uh, so Insomniac within the first twenty four months of the generation being out will have released three games. Two of the three will be PS five only. Yes, I I feel like Insomniac's the only one that could do it, especially because Spider Man. Uh, is this going to be in New York again? So that gives him a lot of like they already right. built New York, so it's just. Gonna I, be I, but I, I still think it'll be it'll be funny though because I think whether it's good you know good bad or indifferent right or wrong I think the consumer will be upset. Wait a minute, God of War 
2 is coming to PS4, but Spider-Man 2 isn't coming to PS4, and it's just in New York again. Like, like I, I don't know. I, I, I hope, like, I, I want PS5-only experiences. I want Xbox One-only experience, Xbox Series-only experience, sorry. Um, those are, like, I want those things. I want reasons to, to, to push the hardware. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be, it, it'll be very interesting if we go the next 12 to 14 months without a PS5 only first party experience. Um, like, that'll be kind of crazy. I wonder how far along, I know Pixel Plus are, they just, there was rumors that they're, they're working with like Sony films to work on something, uh, for their next game. So I'm wondering if they would end up being the next in line. Cause, um. Con- this goes for Ubisoft and everything yeah. too, by the way. Like Ubisoft releasing Far Cry Six and Rainbow Six ext- Extraction. Um, yeah. The that you know, like th- these are all going to work on prior gen. Like I want, I, I want next gen experiences, and and I and I was hoping that there would be more. Like I understand that COVID and the pandemic is a thing, but I was hoping that we would know a little bit more, even if they're delayed. Like I just want to know, because like I like what do you, what's your first feeling? Gotham Knights is going to be on both platforms too, then, right? Uh, yeah, and that's just Warner just being a mess, and we'll talk about Gotham Knights in yeah. just a, a minute or two. Uh, Same thing, Suicide Squad is going to be next-gen only? We don't know, especially now that it's been delayed again, so it's right. kind of hard to tell what that's going to be. A lot of studios yeah. are going to have to decide. I think uh, the pandemic did just did a huge number on uh, release dates for a bunch of stuff, and then I also think cyberpunk plays a factor in that as well yeah. which can be blamed pandemic Absolutely. wise of just like people saw what cyberpunk did and now they're just like okay we cannot be the next cyberpunk uh so it it but by all accounts cyberpunk ran okay on ps5 yeah yeah it ran okay but like everything on the platform that matters the ps4 the biggest platform in the world it was a fucking yeah. train wreck so i think a lot of companies looked at that and were like we can't over rely on roadmap patches you know like cyberpunk wasn't well, yeah, the first somebody, game somebody in chat goes somebody in chat goes naughty dog might do it let's wait for e3 and see sony's not doing anything at e3 yeah we so. might get something from sony i think the rumor is july or august but i don't think it's gonna yeah. be anything big i think i mean and to be fair now it feels like the e3 window goes like mother's day to labor day yeah no it totally is it, it, it's basically the nfl like training camp season it's, to, it's the it's the summer yeah. oh it's the first day of may it's the start of e3 and uh the day after labor day e3 is over like what yeah um i'm sure we'll hear something in july but i think it's going to be like hey here's a look at horizon with kenna. the release date here's kenna yep. here's uh you know um uh, the the Bethesda games, the pair of Bethesda games, Ghostwire and, and yeah. Deathloop, and it's just going to be stuff like that. Um, maybe we'll finally get our first look at God of War, but I don't expect gameplay. I expect another like no c- cinematic story trailer. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe we get a hint at what Naughty Dog's working on, uh, but I I have a feeling it's just. Well, is be it factions. the next thing on their list? The remastered, like is, yeah, which like which now, sounds like, so weird because it was like they gave it to part of Naughty Dog, but Naughty Dog is working on something bigger than that. Do you okay? If it's you know, because you're the second or third person that's brought up factions, do you think that Naughty Dog has the potential to release a quote unquote games as a service multiplayer game only? Well, by I don't know if it's going to be a games as a service, but I I see them releasing factions in partnership with whatever studio. <laughs> It's got to come out with a remake, though, right? It's I think come so. Bundled I, with I think remake. I think you yeah. you you release it as uh, an add on to anyone that already owns the game on PS4, and then you package it on a disc with the boxed copy of Last of Us on PS5. But that's okay. Like, and then does Last of Us Remastered only work on PS5? Um, I would imagine so, since it's already been remastered on PS4. Okay. Um, which I is. F- is factions only then playable on PS5? No, no, no. So I think factions will just be added to Last of Us Part Two on whatever platform Last of Us Part Two is on. But I, I can see them repackaging Last of Us Part Two <laughs> on PS5, not like a full okay. remake or anything or any work done to it. The 60, 60 frame version. Or yeah, something. yeah. Just like, hey, here's a box yeah. copy that I comes with factions. I think that's I how that you. would play. Uh, but Last of Us Remastered, I feel like they can't do two remasters on the same system uh, for that game. Even though the first Last of Us remastered, the original remaster of that uh, was kind of bare bones in terms of what they did. Right. 
but I don't think they can get away with releasing like two remasters right. on the PS4. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff Sony can announce, but it's just a matter of like when it's going to be ready. And if we want to go back into the cycle, like we want stuff announced, but we also at the same time, like we put Sony in. A, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want something announced tomorrow, the next week. And somebody like I'd, I'd, I'd be pissed if I see a trailer next week. And at the end of it, it goes 2024. I'll be like, come no, on. And exactly. That's, <laughs> but that's the position yeah. Sony's in with like people like you and me where we want stuff announced, but we also don't want to wait a while. And Sony's at the point yeah. where it's just like, you can't have both <laughs> like shit happened last year. You can't have both. Yeah. And, and that's the, that's the, like the wild card that Bethesda, that's that's been Bethesda's like mo of like, hey, here's a game that we're announcing in June, and then we're all like, oh, cool, this will be out next year. And they're like, November first this year. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, now, great. Like, you know, arguably, it's a fifty fifty chance if it's going to be a buggy mess or not. But yeah, and who knows how so. Microsoft might affect Bethesda in terms of like, hey, uh, we can't really shit this buggy, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, especially how they're working on like to make sure Halo Infinite is as perfect as possible. They're probably looking at Bethesda like, yeah, no, we can't have the first right. Bethesda game to come under the Microsoft umbrella be a buggy mess. So I'm sure everything Bethesda wise right. is going to get like be put under a microscope and given extra time. All right. I will let you take these next two stories and I'll try to be more quiet so I don't cough on the mic again. OK. All right. Uh, Warner Brothers gave an E3 update. A uh, little disappointing. Uh we're getting a lot of like all the E3 stuff that's been brought up or put on the schedule. We've just been getting reports of like, don't expect all these things that you want at these events to be there. And Warner Brothers said they are only showing Back for Blood. Uh, they told Tech Radar they're only showing Back for Blood during Game Fest E3, whatever. And there will be no Hogwarts Legacy. There will be no Gotham Knights. There will be no Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad to me makes sense because we don't know when that's really coming out other than like a vague window. Hogwarts Legacy lost its director. So I understand why that might take a little bit longer. Gotham Knights is the only one that's like a little confusing because that was supposed to come out already. Wasn't the studio, this publisher, supposed to have its own press conference this year? No, last year. They were supposed to have it. Last year. Uh, okay. Which would have made right. sense. Well, yeah, I guess the DC fandom thing when they announced yeah. Suicide Squad, they announced Gotham Knights. They announced Hogwarts. Okay. Yeah. So it would have made sense last year. And then this year, they're just like, we'll just have Back for Blood, uh, which they're only publishing. It's not an internal studio developing it. They're only publishing it. But I, I applaud their transparency, though, mm -hmm. to be fair. Like coming out beforehand and saying it and not having to release a statement like after the event and everybody going, what the hell? Like, where's this, this, this and this? Like, this is I'm OK with this. Yeah, I'm, because I'm, you're setting your, you're setting the consumer's expectations. You're not hiding something. Yeah, yeah. You're not hiding something. You're just setting expectations. And I think that's what a lot of publishers were seeing, you know, like Coach Media, Deep Silver were like, don't expect Time Splitters. Don't expect Saints Row. Yeah. Don't expect. I was this. super disappointed when I saw that, but I'm like. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's like, at least tell me so I don't get overexcited. Um, I mean, we're seeing that more and more. Nintendo's been doing that. Anytime they put up one of their directs the day before, they'll be like, this is what we're talking about. Chill. PlayStation's done a good job of like, this is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, and then I'll just mention the next one. Uh, Ubisoft basically said, here's what to expect and here's what's not going to be there. And we're getting more and more stuff. Uh, but back to Warner Brothers for a second. I'm still surprised, though, that Gotham Knights was supposed to be out this year, and it was only delayed a couple months ago, is not going to make right. any presence. But I think DC fandom might come back this year, so I'm guessing we'll get a deep dive. I wonder how that works, though, like in terms of like who really controls the power in that situation, though. Does Warner Brothers control the power, or does DC control the power? Or specifically because they were just sold, DC, uh, Discovery <laughs> now own that power. Right. So I they're just kind of a mess right now, I guess. So is this part of that mess of like, we don't know who's running us anymore. Who mm -hmm. knows? But still, I, I would have I would have thought we would have gotten like a gameplay thing since the game was supposed to be out already for Gotham Knights. Right. But it looks like that's not it happening. makes you wonder, like, how long this delay really is going to be. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. And then it sucks <laughs> again. It sucks, but I want it to be really good. Like, I, yeah. I mean, it, I'm, I'm OK waiting. I just, you know, like kind of like what we just talked about a couple minutes ago, like maybe they announced it a little too early. Yeah. Like, and, but then they're also in a spot where 
they can't release it too close to Suicide Squad. I know they're two different right. games, but I don't think you can release them in the same holiday period. I, I barely right. think you can release them in the same year uh, without, you know, burning out fans, even though they're two different style of like third person action games. Uh, Ubisoft also went out and basically said, uh, you'll see Far Cry 6, Assassin's Creed Valhalla DC, a few surprises, and then Rainbow Six Extract, I believe is the new name, uh, which is for quarantine. So they said, expect those games and a few surprises. I think they were specific and said one surprise, and I saw it on websites that said a few surprises. But they uh -huh. said no Division 2 DLC info, no Division Heartland info, and no Prince of Persia <laughs> remake. So they, and then they're setting those Prince of Persia dev came out and said like next year. Yeah. So if you remember, they <laughs> showed it at a Ubisoft forward last year and people were like, this remake looks like shit. It was, yeah. They showed it at a Ubisoft forward and, and they dated it for January, 2021. Yeah. And then it looked terrible and they said, okay, well, we're, we're, we'll put more effort into delaying this it or whatever to put more effort into it. And then they came out like this week or this month and said, well, we'll, you know, like we're, it's not coming in 2021 and people were like, whoa. Yeah. Like it, it's people are like at the same time they're like wow but then they're like okay well you know like maybe it really needs to get right. Wait, which Ubisoft is one of those companies that are totally willing to lay something as long as they need to to yeah. get it done and if it comes out broken they will support it for an unreasonable <laughs> amount of time uh especially yeah. if it catches And success. fix it. Yeah. Like they they'll support it and fix it. That's yeah. the difference. Um but yeah like there's a lot of rumors of like a PVP free to play multiplayer game that's going to like take Ghost Recon uh, and Division and, and Splinter, Cell. Splinter Cell mechanics. And people are like, can we just get a Splinter Cell game, please? Yeah, people want a Splinter Cell game, but like Ubisoft saying that they're going to focus more on free-to-play experiences, it just makes sense for them to take Splinter Cell free-to-play in a multiplayer environment. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure Ubisoft, like any company, even though Rainbow Six uh, is doing so well for them, they have to know the game is like what like seven years old now <laughs> that yeah. eventually they're going to have to retire that and move on to something else so them going free to play with a splinter cell rainbow six kind of experience going free to play with a with a tactical shooter to learn from it yeah to make a rainbow six free to play correct exactly like I, like they're going to use this as a guinea pig yeah because how how long? they've been they've been using for honor as a guinea pig too in terms of like i think that they've got a ton of data from for honor in terms of what players are willing to do and aren't willing to do what they are willing to pay for what they aren't willing to pay for along with rainbow six as well rainbow six siege um and then they'll you know like i'm sure like as much of a of a flop as it was the the battle royale they released i can't think of the name of it right now but um, hyperscape yeah that's right i'm sure that they got more stuff from there um, as well as like what works and what doesn't work and then they'll you know they'll put some big names behind it and then they'll figure out again what's you know what you know how is this working let's adjust let's fix how fast can we patch something and then they'll be like okay here's the big here is our competitive new next generation rainbow six siege style game and it's free to play yeah and that that has to be their 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 process going forward <laughs> or their plans because I just looked it up, like, Siege came out 2015. Like, that game, mm -hmm. multiplayer games like that can last a long time, but at a certain point, you know, the return on investment dwindles down that you have to look at the next thing. So, them focusing on free-to-play, it makes sense for them to look at Splinter Cell. It will piss a lot of Splinter Cell fans off, but it also will bring a lot of Splinter Cell fans into checking out this new thing. Even... Mm -hmm. Is Ubisoft is basically going to have to make a bet on themselves that they are going to make something really good that even pissed off Splinter Cell fans that hate play it will get addicted to and then want to support it. Because uh, yep. that's basically what they've kind of worked themselves into. Uh, if they can find if they can find that that competitiveness that they got with Rainbow Six Siege and the, the gameplay dynamic, I'm not saying that they can do this, but the gameplay dynamic that um blizzard got with overwatch and they can put those two things together and it be free to play it'd be game over yeah in terms of what they would be able to accomplish like and that might not be till like 24 2024 or 2025 but i think that you know like in terms of patches and balancing like ubisoft does a really good job yeah and it, this will probably be their future like they already said like you know working on free-to-play games yeah. um 
we'll just have to, I guess, you know, if you don't want them to support or if you don't want them to move to like a free to play company, I guess you have to, you have to dive into Far Cry 6 and buy it just to show them that there's still a market for that, which there is, uh, but yeah. they can definitely be profitable if they, I mean, they're already profitable. They can definitely make more profits if they, they get a free to play game to actually take because uh, Hyperscape just didn't do it for them. Uh, right. That's all I have for news. Uh, there was some other minor stuff, but that was like the the big stuff. Obviously, E three is happening next week. Uh, I think I have Dave. You guys should hear from us a couple times next week. So. Yeah, I think we're we're planning to at least do two episodes next week, based on how the schedule is working out for for E three, and we'll. I'm looking forward to it. I like uh, we'll have like what Ubisoft Saturday, Xbox on Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday is just like whatever the fuck the ESA is doing. Yeah, for Square Square is throwing some stuff in there too now, yeah. like this week. Square th- Square threw something in there, so there'll definitely be some things that we might take two or three, two, three or four like announcements over two days and do an episode, and then do another two, three or four announcements over a couple of days and do an episode. Yeah, yeah, and that's why Dave got sick this week. He just needed to get it out of his system <laughs> before next week, so he'll be nice and healthy. Uh, it's You know what? It's better. I, I'll take this this week if i got to record two or three times next week. to, to f- I'm off work next week, too, Yeah, because I'm always off this week, so to feel good, like, this sinus infection, like, kicked my ass. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, like, what we're playing and watching as we move on to that, uh, as many of you know, I said last week my son got engaged and his fiance was here. Um, and so she was in town. So we spent some time getting ready for her. We went to Cedar point in Ohio. Yeah. I went to Cedar point when I wasn't hundred percent, um, the theme park in a pandemic wasn't terrible, uh, near the end of the pandemic, obviously. But, uh, um, then, um, we, so I wasn't really, you know, she was here, um, and we were working on the house and then I was working and we were out of town. So I really didn't play much of anything at all. Um, I did rearrange my office again. Um, cause I got a different desk and I'm back to less monitors than I had before. And then I was messing with my gaming PC, updating that a little bit, downloaded mass effect. So I got that far, <laughs> um, had to sign back into my origins account and stuff that I had before. Um, I did on the trip to and from Cedar point, it's about a two and a half hour drive, uh, from our house, uh, did start listening to Jason Schreier's new book, um, press reset. Um, it's pretty good. It's, I don't think it's as good as his first one. Um, I think the storytelling in the first one for each game was much better. This one, um, he spent a lot of time in the first two or three chapters, like connecting all the chapters together, mm-hmm. which I'm not usually like as big of, I, I'm not, as, it's not what I was expecting. It's not necessarily that I'm not a fan of it, but as they were talking about how people move from company to company and how, um, he spent a lot of time like talking about 2K studios, um, in terms of like, uh, with Ken Levine and Bioshock and Bioshock 2. I'm only like, I think we're in chapter three or four. So um, there's just a lot of connecting to it. But I, I really like um, hearing more about the game development world. And um, I don't have the patience or the time to, to, I have the time, but I definitely don't have the patience to read, read a book. So I'm listening to the audiobook book uh, on Audible. Um, and it's, 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 it's okay. Um, so if you're sitting there going back to, you got a long commute tune from work and you don't have DDG, DDG to listen to, like I recommend that. Uh, and I watched just crap stuff on TV because I didn't feel well. Like another, um, just terrible shows, terrible movies. Like, I'm sick. I don't care. (laughs) Yeah. Um, for me, it's nothing new. It's just Biomutant and Knockout City. Like, Knockout City is just the, I have 20, 30 minutes to play something. So I play a couple rounds of Knockout City. Still enjoying it. I was happy to see the, uh, EA announced that there's been 5 million players to Knockout City. Uh, That's since cool. launch which is nice uh never have an issue uh finding a game don't really load into any games where i'm missing people i think that only happened once on like launch day where i was lo- loaded into a two a team That's of two instead probably of three. server yeah. server issues yeah. yeah but since then i haven't had a game where i loaded into a lobby with less than the required amount of people uh so still having fun with that uh trying to like get teammates to actually like do more like uh i think uh chris penwell from active uh quest he he mentioned that like the community doesn't pass the ball like the players don't pass the ball which is like very important in the game uh because it charges the ball up immediately when you pass it to someone 
And oh, interesting. Do you think does the game do a good job of telling that to you? Um, it does early on. Like if you actually do the tutorial that they like load you into right away, but if you skip the tutorial, then you know. Okay. Uh, they should have made it unskippable, but I think they just wanted people to play right away. But it's one of those things where yeah. like the other person doesn't even need to ask for it. If they're in view and you hit the pass button, you'll immediately throw the ball to them and charge it. And they, in my experience, even when I'm not using voice chat, if people see that and you do it enough to them, they start to actually do it throughout the game. Like if we get our ass kicked in the first round, second round, I'm just passing the ball constantly. And then they get the hang of it. And then I notice they start passing the ball back to me. Uh, so it's a very important feature that not a lot of people are using uh, and once you use it, it, it helps significantly when, when you're playing. Uh, I'm still playing Biomutant. Uh, I'm enjoying it because I'm taking Biomutant as like a RPG from like the PS2, PS3 era in terms of like <laughs> scale. Um, I, I will agree uh, after putting way more time in it. Uh, like I think you mentioned that you didn't really like the way the voice work worked with like the narrator and stuff like that. And I didn't mind mm-hmm. it. But like six, eight hours into the game, I'm starting to be like, I'm kind of tired of how this, how the voice acting. <laughs> they works. released a huge patch this week, though. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that, that's what. Like, and it sounds like they've already like dealing with some narrative issues and pacing issues, which I'll be really curious to what they do. That's kind of a hard mechanic to change. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, but it's one of those things where like I was playing for like probably like my longest session. It was like a three three hour session. I've been playing everything else in like one two hour chunks up to that point. But it was a three-hour session where I started to skip cutscenes or dialogue sections just because I was like, I don't, I don't want to hear this. Uh, just let me dig it through. Uh, but I'm still enjoying uh, that game uh, a lot, and I, I will probably end up finishing it. But uh, it's just taking me a little bit longer than I, I thought. Uh, especially, it's been so fucking hot in Chicago, so I've just been kind of, yeah. when I get home from work, uh, and my work doesn't have like, air conditioning, uh, so it's one of those things where I get home from. No, your work, your your work has air conditioning. They just don't really care about the temperature in the building. Yeah, no, I, my section just is nowhere near right. air conditioning vent, uh, and even right. then they don't they don't give a shit uh, about right. the store. Uh, so it's hot as hell uh, when I get home, and I just end up watch watching random garbage. Uh, like right now, not garbage, but just like the stuff I've kind of seen before, just because it's comfort stuff so right now watching uh the terminator sarah connor chronicles show again um and then watching adventure time so com- two completely different things but both dealing with post-apocalyptic stuff so watching yeah. both those uh as like comfort tv uh because it's just too damn hot to do anything uh but that's it for me hoping to like actually dive into mass effect because i haven't really had the energy yeah. to get lost in mass effect um but this week's Ratchet and Clank, so yeah. planning to Ratchet and Clank and E3, so yeah, you might hear from us a lot in the next fourteen days. Yeah, so. yeah. So I plan to, especially hearing Ratchet and Clank's like ten to twelve hours or like ten to fifteen, depending on who you're talking to and how crazy they are for trophies. Yeah. Sounds perfect for me. Like I could beat that yeah. in like especially two three like sessions. If I can, if I can start that game on a Saturday or Sunday while I'm on vacation and be done by like Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm 100% for it. Yeah, so. yeah. so I'm looking forward to that, and we'll probably record a special episode for that once yeah. both of us are finished. Uh, but that that is it for me. All right. Uh, questions from the community using hashtag AskDigitalDays. Uh, Stefan writes, do you miss going to E3 in person, or do you like the fact that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and watch it? Um, I miss going in person. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like both for me. Like, I miss going in person just because I like the adventure of just, like, you you, you kind of ha- you have a schedule but you're also trying to do whatever you can in between like appointments and i love that aspect of just like all right what are we doing tonight uh, i have an hour to kill between appointments let me see if i can like finesse another appointment somewhere else and just all that craziness and then like seeing people even if even if they're like pr people and other uh like journalists that i i've i've seen before or talked to before and all we do is like a 5 minute conversation between appointments i miss that like interaction yeah. Or when you run into like the same person 10 different times through your like 30 to 50 appointments you have that week. And then you just like recap what you saw and what they saw. And then if they saw something different, then you're just like, oh shit, I got to go find that. I, I miss that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also really nice to just sit back and watch a, a stream on your TV uh, for some of that stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I miss in person. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, like, yeah, just the networking, especially with like it selfishly as DDG is so young, it'd be a great networking opportunity that we haven't had the opportunity for yet. Um, and then just, I mean, I have a harder time with it as well. Like emails and, you know, text messages and back and forth just isn't as personal as a face to face conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, also so. it's funny just watching people embarrass themselves at these events too. <laughs> You know, when, when you go to like an Ubisoft party and you see like a respected journalist just drunk out of their mind or something, or <laughs> you just see like the YouTubers that are acting like assholes. That's very fascinating to watch. Like me and yeah. Dave have definitely seen some like asshole influencers acting up and that's really fun to watch. Uh, I, I yeah. miss that. Um, all right. Next question. I think you deleted the name. From oh, no, this. it's Stefan asked Stephen. two questions, so. Okay, so Stefan's second one. Will you be uh, treble dipping on GTA 5, PS5 slash whatever the new Xbox version is? I I bought the PS3 and PS4 versions, completed the story twice. Not sure if I can do it three times, unless the expanded part is amazing. I did double dip on (coughs) GTA, even though I didn't finish GTA on uh, PS3, and then I didn't finish it on PS4. I think I stopped around the same spots. Uh, I don't think I will get it on PS5. The expanded part has to be completely insane. And if the expanded aspect is just multiplayer related, I don't care. Like, right. <laughs> I don't need to visit that game. I didn't, I didn't buy it, period. So um, those games are, again, in the in the realm of gaming that it sells really well. I respect really well. I've tried to mess with them a little bit, and I just it's just not me. So, yeah. um, so you'll buy it for $70 then when it comes out on PS5. <laughs> Uh, yeah so all right uh that's it for the show lighter show this week which is fine by me because i apologize again for the sound of my voice i'm just trying to tough it through as best as i can um all the social accounts are in the show notes main account is at digital days pod on twitter michael's is at the first M- at the first mjc mine is at good dave hunt facebook group discord servers are all in the show notes as well and patreon uh patreon tiers patreon.com slash digital days gaming um one dollar tip jar three dollar discord access five dollar 24 hour early access to the regular show and seven dollars gets you a monthly bonus episode uh thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this week and uh just be ready for a whole bunch of stuff next week hopefully we get to talk about a lot of cool things and and have a good time because i'm ready after like six months for something to be really really exciting and new and innovative and cool so and that is not happening next week but we'll see <laughs> We're going yeah, to see I Disappointed just, just, Dave next week. Yeah. I just hope we hear about something coming out this holiday that we don't know about. That's what, even if it's just two games. Yeah. Hopefully so. So, all right. I hope everyone has a great week. Keep moving forward. Don't be a dick. <laughs>